So a little while back, I made a video on the 14 to 24 f 2.8 S lens for the Nikon Z mirrorless cameras. In that video, I explained how it was my favorite lens in my arsenal now. But at the time of that video, I did not have any filters for it. So since then, I have got the Nissi screw-in filters for that lens. And I must say, I've been getting some pretty awesome images from these filters. As a landscape photographer, I personally love long exposure photography. Um, especially during sunrise and sunset, I, one of my favorite things to do is put on a 10 stop filter to really get a unique looking landscape image. I've always just loved lengthening the shutter, creating some pretty cool and unique images. So in today's video, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going over these filters, some of the images I've gotten from them, and how these filters have really added another dimension to this lens and allows me to get some even better images. So let's jump into it. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another video. And as always, please hit that thumbs up button before we get started, because it'll help out the video as well as the channel. So I have used a bunch of different brands of ND filters and polarizers, uh, but I'm just gonna say right off the bat, these are hands down the most neutral filters I have ever used. I'll definitely get into that once we review the images. There is absolutely no color cast from these things at all. So what I have here and what I've been using is the Nissi circular polarizer filter. Polarizers I don't use too much, but there are a few instances here and there where I do use them. The ND64, which is a six stop ND filter, as well as the ND1000, which is a 10 stop filter. Each of these filters comes with this leather stitched case super nice protects the filters pretty well and uh each one is also labeled with what filter is inside which is obviously nice uh i really do like these cases um and not like a a really hard shell case like this because these are 112 millimeter filters which are are very large filters and these cases still allow it to be pretty thin and it, all three of these fit in my bag pretty comfortably, even though they are 112 millimeter filters. So these filters do run about $199 a piece on the Nissi website, but I've only had these filters for a couple weeks and we are literally in the least picturesque time of year ever. Um, there's barely any snow on the ground, leaves are off the trees. It's just the mud and stick season basically. And still the pictures I've been able to get with using these filters have been awesome. So for me personally, being a landscape photographer that loves long exposure photography, the price point of these and the quality of them is worth it to me. The filters themselves are very quality. Uh, but one thing I will say is since you're screwing these filters into a lens hood, you're not screwing it right onto the lens like typically you usually do. Um, you're limited to where you can get your hand on the filter. So each side of this lens hood, there's an opening. That's what you're limited to. You can't go around the whole lens. So it can be a bit tricky to get the filter on and off, especially the polarizer filter because it has that other rotation on it. It's got the threads and then you got to rotate the polarizer too. So that can be especially difficult to get off. It's definitely all not a big deal, but I just wanted to add that into the video. Uh, I have found it a lot easier if my camera is mounted on a tripod, which most of the time it is when I'm shooting. It's it's easier to take the camera off of the tripod, hold that in one hand, and then use your filter like this. It just gives you a lot more control. But another thing Nissi has done is this lens comes with a Nikon lens hood, uh, and this is the lens hood where the filters screw into. Uh, but what Nissi found is that the stock Nikon lens hood that goes onto this, there's quite a bit of light leakage around it through the back. So Nissi made their own lens hood, which takes that light leakage away. And actually this Nissi lens hood is really nice. It's feels like it's solid metal. And I basically leave it on there at all times now. Even if I'm not using the filters, I leave that right on there. And it really just adds another dimension of protection for the lens. And it still fits in my bag just fine. So that basically stays glued right onto this lens now. So they did a great job with that, figuring out that that stock Nikon one leaked a bunch of light. Uh, it's not a huge deal if you're shooting like with your polarizer. It can start to become an issue when you're using a your 10 stop and you're using 30 second plus long exposure. Uh, if it's leaking light, you don't want that. And then one more thing before we jump into some of the pictures I've gotten with these. Another option for this lens 
is they do have a 100 millimeter filter holder as well. Uh, that basically screws right onto the lens just like this lens hood does. So if you have filters like this, the 100 millimeter square ones, maybe you have some of them laying around. They also have this, which I have used this as well, uh, and this works very well. It'll hold two of the 100 millimeter filters, and uh, it screws right on there, locks onto the lens really nicely. So that's another option for you with this lens. And this filter holder will run about $89.99, I believe, on the Nissi website. But I've mainly been using the circular ones because I've been very, very impressed with them. Let's turn around here, get into the computer. I'll show you some pictures I've gotten with them. Alrighty guys, here we are in Lightroom. Um, we'll get to this picture in a minute, but first thing I wanna show you is this right here. This was a photo I shot with just the lens with no filters. And if you see, if I go over to this next image, this image I used a six stop filter. And this is really what I want to show you right off the bat here. Um, look at how neutral this filter is. So right here, this was just the lens, no filter. This image here, that was with the filter. And just look at that. I'll go back and forth between these two. There is absolutely no color cast. I mean, look at how neutral that is. Like I said, I've used a bunch of different filters, basically every single kind. All of them have a slight color cast up until now. The best I've used since this is probably the Lee system. They always have a slightly blue color cast, which I have a lot of blue in a lot of my images anyway, so I didn't mind that. And you can always fix that in post, but I just, I really couldn't believe how neutral this was. I specifically did this on purpose, tried taking a picture without a filter and then with one. I was very, very surprised at how neutral it actually was. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. So let's go back to a few more. So these images here, these were a couple of the first ones I took. So the sun was rising over here to the right and I believe I used a 10 stop on this one. A 10 stop's my favorite filter. So a majority of them are taken with that. And uh, I just really liked how this picture came together and then I took this one on the same morning, uh, sun was rising a little bit to the left here, and then you had the crescent moon up there too. So that was that's a cool picture there. Uh, that one was with the 10 stop as well. A lot of these I shoot with the ISO all the way down to 50. F8 is a pretty common aperture I shoot at for long exposure. 20 second exposure this was. Got We got a little bit of a snowstorm and I went to Taganic State Park to look at the falls. I got this one. The flow from the falls wasn't really flowing as much as I'd like. I'm pretty sure I used a six stop filter on this so I could get a little bit of the motion in the water here, especially flowing around these rocks. So the rocks are nice and sharp and then the water just got that smooth, creamy look to it. And then I think I did have another waterfall one in here too. Yeah, right here. Yeah, so I took this one here. This one is a waterfall not too far from my house. And I actually added a little bit of the blue in on the water here. Uh, just because I like the look of it. But overall, this was a pretty boring image until I put a little bit of saturation in on the leaves, saturated them a little bit, and then added a little bit of blue on the water. And then the, the rock is nice and sharp. I think I used the polarizer for this. Uh, and that was able to cut down on the reflection down here and then allowed me to get a one second shutter speed. Now I'll move on to a couple of my favorite images I got from this. I'll do this one first. This one was of the boat houses on Canadagua Lake. Um, it was another one where I got snubbed by the clouds from a, a sunrise, but I still threw on the 10 stop filter and got a pretty cool picture. And then the other morning I went to Letchworth State Park and the clouds were absolutely perfect for long exposure photography. So here's one I got. I took these pictures during sunrise and um, I took these with the 10 stop filter and was really able to lengthen the shutter speed out. So this one is at f8. I shot it completely at its widest focal length at 14 millimeter and was able to get the, the streaking clouds. And this is, this is just one of my favorite things to do with the 10 stop filter. Uh, when the clouds are right, you can really get a lengthy shutter speed and you know capture the whole scene when the clouds are going by. And then here's another one. I wanna post this one on Instagram soon. I haven't really edited it yet, but I'm pretty much done with it. And I really, really like the way this one came out. Sun was rising over here to the right and the clouds were just perfect for a 10 stop filter. Uh, you can see the sunlight faintly hitting the top of the gorge here and a little bit in here in this middle part. And then obviously on the snow here. And 
that picture right there is why I love 10 stop filters. That, that sunrise was perfect for this. So I've got a bunch more pictures to edit up from these filters and I'm, I'm still capturing them, you know, each day. So I'll link my Instagram below. Definitely be sure to follow me there for future pictures. So there you have it guys. If you have this lens and are looking for filters, uh, I definitely highly, highly recommend these Nissi ones. Uh, like I said, they're the best ones I've used uh, and they really, really complete this lens as a landscape photographer. Um, like I said, I love shooting with filters, especially the 10 stop ND filters. Long exposure photography is just really another way to get really creative with your photos. Definitely check them out if you need filters for this lens. Uh, whether you go the route of doing the screw-in ones like this or the 100 millimeter ones like this, I'd definitely check them out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know below what you think in the comments. I'll have the filters linked in the description as well, so check that out. And as always, thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video.